Hi, and welcome to the Kaplan Connect. I'm your host, Fire Chief Scott Freitag. And with me today is our guest and assistant chief of planning logistics and lots of other stuff, finance currently, Cody Rose. That's Chief, chief Gellier said is it's chief, the chief of stuff. You are the chief, chief of stuff, yeah. and we appreciate you. And I'd just like to point out to anyone watching on YouTube today, or there could be a problem with the audio, I'm not sure, but our producer was messing with equipment, and then she just said, I don't care. I heard that. That is I true. Did. That's a true statement. It's a true statement. So we might be talking. She can't even hear us coming right? through. Nothing's we, coming we through. don't know how this is going to turn out because she I can care. hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. You're Perfect. good. We You're need good. to do mic checks today. Yes, you did. I, I listened to you talk. You haven't stopped talking since you got here. Well, I had things to Nobody say. will believe that, Kathy. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Frytech not talking. Right. Well, uh, speaking of that, you all are on a time frame, apparently. Um, and this morning we had the privilege of pushing a new engine into service and one of our uh, new engine ceremonies where we do the push-in we also do the uh, transfer of the water with the leather buckets we'll talk more about that um, and the wet down but let's let's talk about the the engines Cody we we got three new engines in took a while to get these in service because we switched manufacturers so first and foremost we switched from Rosenbauer to Pierce what were some of the things that fleet looked at when the decision was made along with the, the engine committee to uh, to make a change? One of the first things that started this whole conversation with Dominic and I was the customer service that we were receiving from Pierce and the companies that they work with. And we'd have parts that were- Rosenbauer. Rosenbauer, sorry, sorry, we have Rosenbauer. But we'd have parts that we need for the engines and we couldn't get those parts for three, four, five months sometimes because it just went around and around and sometimes it's going to be covered it's not going to be covered we can let you do it or we can't let you do it so it got to the point where i was super frustrated told dominic like we need to go shopping and look at other uh, manufacturers to see where we go so we went and visited along with the folks from the apparatus committee went and visited um, several other organizations that had different manufacturers and um, everybody was in agreement that pierce was probably the one that we wanted to move forward with and that includes our mechanics. Look right. at them. Just they were clean. Everything was – you could tell that there was a purpose behind everything that was done there. And when you look at the electrical lines and the fuel lines and all the lines that are run from the cab towards the back, that everything was clean. And it was it was like somebody had a purpose for what they were doing as opposed right. to just them being all over the place. So that process took – that took us probably – five months to get all that done. Then we decided on Pierce and then started going down that road with Pierce, which then came the clean cab concept. If that Was that where you're going right. to go? <laughs> well, first, I wanted to point out a couple of things that the mechanics pointed out, the fleet pointed out to uh, the board when we talked about switching manufacturers was that Pierce, let's just look at the copper lines for the HVAC systems and the engines. Oh. Pierce carefully bends the lines in uh, a place that makes sense, whereas a lot of other manufacturers use uh, T connectors or some sort of connectors. Mm -hmm. So, by bending the carefully bending the lines, you end up with fewer failure points in those lines. And something else they pointed out was each of the wiring bundles, and there's a lot of wiring bundles in an engine, are neatly put together. And if you have a problem with a green wire in bundle two, you simply call Pierce Wiring and say, "Here's who I am. Here's the engine number that we have. The green wire bundle two." here's the issue, and they can go back, pull that diagram, and tell them exactly what it is. So mm -hmm. um, along with the customer ser service side of things uh, and fit and finish, it's just craftsmanship yeah. overall, I think. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive than the Rosenbauer, but not that much uh, for the quality that you're getting especially. Um, so I think, I think that my hat's off to the apparatus committee, to fleet, to you for doing all the background research and finding us a product that we feel will will fit this organization. And because of the product we bought, the expectation is we can move them out to 24 years or 26 years. I can't remember. 24. So 24. 12 and 12 would be the goal. Okay. And right now it's 10 and 10. Correct. So we're actually getting more life out of them for, for not much more money. Yep. So the other thing with these new engines, Cody's the, the clean cab concept. We talk a lot about uh, firefighters and, and cancer and exposures. And so on these, we went to the clean cab concept, which was not necessarily an easy move, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but we're doing it. So tell us about that. 
And so just so because I tell some of the guys out there to be clear that it's I call it a cleaner cab because right. it's not clean. We we will never get a completely clean cab with everything that's in. No, there. not one hundred percent. But what we've done is that the, the um, SCBAs are now in the compartments instead of in the cab. So that just that alone and all the stuff that comes on the F- SCBAs and the straps and everything that's involved in a, an air pack, um, I think we've taken a lot of that out of there. Turnouts, the only turnouts that will go in the cab now are clean turnouts. So if they go in a fire, they do anything like that, those we call bag and tag, but they should be bagged and tagged and thrown on the exterior apparatus, whether it's on the hose bed or in a compartment, wherever they put them. Till they get back to the station, and they can put them outside of the station, and then our warehouse will come pick them up and wash them, and then get them back to them. But um, yeah, that that was that was a work in progress to right. get that uh, cleaner cab concept, and getting guys to understand that we're trying to get we're trying to take some of those particles and some of those mm-hmm. cancer causing agents that are in your cab out. We are not going to get them all, but our goal is to get some of those out to right. to help you have a longer life after the fire department. Well, and some of the other things that the clean cab offers is more solid surfaces, mm-hmm. uh, including the seats having more vinyl as opposed to cloth. Yeah. So they're not absorbing the carcinogen. So you can pretty much hose one of these yeah. cabs out. Yeah. The other thing is when we look at the SCBAs and some of the current engines where we don't have the clean cab concept, you're constantly finding, especially immediately after a structure fire, uh, debris from the fire that's come off the tanks that are embedded in the seats. Mm -hmm. So there's additional exposures going forward. And now not only do you have the exposure from your gear and all of that, now you're just getting in in and out of the cab with your uniform. Your uniform is absorbing all Mm -hmm. of that. You're taking in the station, you're taking whatever it is. So I think it's a good move for us. I think there's some safety factors to this as well, as opposed to firefighters being in seats in their SCBAs, which are mounted, um, they'll have their seatbelt on mm-hmm. across, which I think is safer. Yep. Yep. Uh, and it doesn't really, it, it doesn't add any additional time once you get on scene, get off, grab your SCBA, go to work. Mm-hmm. And when we were in uh, Texas, I think it was last year, two years ago, Tammy and I are in Texas and happened to be a vehicle fire while we were there. So we mm-hmm. sit and watched it and they had their SCBAs in the compartment and watching those guys get out of the get out of the cab, go put their SCBAs on them and go put the fire out. There was no flaws in anything they did. So that was kind of the selling point for me when I seen that, like this is possible. And I know we did all the stuff at sure. our training center that we had times and showing that it can be quicker with them being outside of the, the ca- uh, compartment or outside of the cab into the compartment. But that was seeing that actually happen right there in front of us was, mm-hmm. yeah, th- those guys got out, put their SCBAs on, and they were fighting fire. And I would say it's probably less than two minutes. It was pretty quick. Right. Well, and if you think about it, um, it, when I was on the engine, we would get out to the engine, and then the engineer can't move the engine until we are completely strapped in, mm-hmm. which means that there's a 30-second a delay getting out of the station as we're putting our SCBAs on in the cab. So this is, again, it's it's a quicker response out of the station. We get on the scene, then we throw that SCBA on in an environment that is safer. Um, yeah. And it reduces the delay in the station for the initial response. And for those that would say, well, we just never waited for that, you probably don't want to mention that mm-hmm. because that would be a violation of policy. So we'll just... Yeah, we'll just lay that out there for what it is. Um, so the other the other side of this, and I think the final side of this, Cody, is the uh, push in ceremony today out at fifty one. We have two more scheduled. Uh, I think November eighteenth. November first is, is the 50, engine fifty four. Okay, and then November fifteenth, I think is maybe November fifteenth is sixty two. Yeah. Okay. Two weeks basically, they're separated two weeks apart from each right. other. So, you know, in, in the early days of the fire service, they had handmade leather buckets that they used on fires. Um, a retired Captain Dean Stewart came to me and said, listen, I will make you a leather bucket for the fire department if you promise to bring back the push-in ceremonies like used to happen with new apparatus. And I said, absolutely. And he not only created a fire department bucket, which I think Kathy has some pictures or videos of that she's going to add in. Um, he ended up making a, a hand-tooled leather bucket, hand-painted for every one of our stations. And so we, as part of the ceremony, we talk about why the push-in is important because in the early days of the fire department, they used horses. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know horses because I'm not an equestrian person, but apparently they don't have reverse. Yeah. So... They had to push 
<laughs> and so that's just stuck with the engines, right? Yeah. Um, and and using the leather bucket is kind of a cool way to get back to some of the the healthy fire department traditions, um, and showing that respect to the community with our apparatus that they allow us to purchase. And I think it gets guys a little more pride in what they're doing as well. I mean, those buckets are, are pretty awesome that Dean yes, made, and they're beautiful. And when guys see those in the stations and know what they're for, it gives mm-hmm. them a little more pride in that 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 bucket was bucket was made by Dean, but also that was used for your new engine that was put into service right. there, or will be in the future when you get a new one if you haven't got one yet. Yeah, and Dean's part of the history of this agency. He's also part of the future of this agency yep. even though he's retired yep. they also do the wet down mm-hmm. where the the old they use water from the old engine tank and they spray the side of the uh the new engine as part of the christening ceremony and then we push it in um so it's kind of a nice way to really honor the traditions of the past fire service um apply them to the new engines the new folks we had uh, one of our new firefighters nelson out there today on the mm-hmm. crew um and Kathy was pointing out that they had Nelson kind of do everything at the station <laughs> yeah. uh, w- regarding the ceremony. And I thought that was pretty nice of, of yeah. Nick and Kyle to put Nelson in that position where uh, as a new probationary firefighter, he gets to experience that hundreds of years of tradition being put into play uh, and really being a, a, an important part of putting that brand new fire engine in service that he gets to serve on today. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and that's one of the things that Kathy was noticing too, that he was very humble to be, have that right. opportunity to do that. But yeah, I think it was good. And that whole entire crew, uh, very appreciative of yes. what they were doing and understanding the history behind why they're doing some of those things. So right. I think it was, it went very well. I mean, we do like giving firefighter Guzzo a, a hard time. Acting captain Guzzo. Acting today, captain. Yeah. And the brand yeah, new engine. Today. First one to sit in that seat. Yes. When it's put in service. Acting captain goes, we like, but we've like given him a hard time since day one. Yeah, that's true. I think you've been part of those. We won't talk about him here. Liability. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was a, a great ceremony. We appreciate our folks coming out, participating. We appreciate when they bring their their little ones out with them, the, the mm-hmm. kids who get to participate in, in uh, moving a bucket of water and putting it in the new engine or helping to push on the front bumper of the engine as it goes back into the station. It's a nice family event for the agency. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately for this one, we couldn't get as much community involvement because we just didn't have space. Yeah. There's no parking, there's not enough space, but certainly um, we'll do more when we put 54 and 62 in service. Um, but overall, it's a good day. I think uh, hats off to uh, the fleet division and the warehouse and tech services for getting these apparatus together and ready to roll out. I know it was a big task because we haven't used Pierce before. so. Your folks in fleet really had to do a lot of work to to fabricate pieces and parts for this, um, which is the great thing about the talented people we have out there. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of a lot of gratitude to those folks for all the work they did to get these things in service. Everyone coming out today, Kathy. I know you're going to put some B-roll video in this. Um, anything else to say about the new? I just uh, reiterate what you're just saying that the guys that out in fleet did and, and tech services while well, Tony right. came out and doing the radios and then the warehouse pulling all these, having all the inventory yes. stocked and ready to go. Um, they, they did an amazing job and I can promise you that doesn't happen at other organizations. Right. And the fab work that, that Ben and Chris and those guys have done out there is it's impressive. And I would encourage people, if you haven't seen them yet, mm-hmm. go, go out there and look at them and see see all that stuff and all that stuff inside the compartment and inside the cab all mm-hmm. that was fab by our guys it wasn't we looked online and found uh, uh, something that we wanted and order it and bring it in right it was all done by our guys so we yeah. had some very talented people in every in every one of these divisions yes yes um and you know i mean when you look at the the fab work that ben and chris can do it's amazing their welding skills yeah um if only they had the plasma cutter that I keep requesting for them, because it if would. If only their, they had the bigger building to put the plasma cutter, it, it would, would make their great. job so yeah. much easier. If they had even a four by four <laughs> plasma cutter, that I'm certain we could find room for. I'm still supportive of those individuals getting the tools that they need <laughs> to do the job. So fleet, just know I'm supporting you. Dominic and I are just as much as support with you as soon as we get the new building. Yeah, yeah, but I'll get you a plasma cutter. I'll order it tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Yeah. That's a true statement. PA will be in the email when I get back, I'm sure. Right. It's all signed, ready to go. Here you go, order it. I don't know yeah. where the money's coming from, but just order it. I'll order it. That's <laughs> fine. I can make the order. I know where to go. Well, Cody, thank you. Kathy, yep. thank you for being out there today to get uh, all the pictures and video that you did uh, and for putting the program together and, and so much organization. 
Uh, yeah, admin actually helped out with the program and everything. Thank Good you job, to our admin yes. folks for helping out with all of that. We appreciate you. Um, and we hope that this podcast turns out okay because Kathy doesn't care this week. Yeah, hopefully they can hear us. I That's care all that so matters. much. Y'all are awful. I don't know. That's what she said. All right. Well, with that, thank you all for watching. We look forward to seeing you next week. Don't crash the engine. <laughs>